So you're starting to think about what to say in the activity section of your med school application. Stick around, let's talk basics and how to maximize your candidacy. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Write Your Acceptance. I am Dr. Josie and every cycle I work with medical and dental school applicants uh, vying for those coveted seats, right? Whether it is UCSF, Mayo Clinic, UM, UF Shands, I have helped students get in and uh, stand out on their personal statement and secondaries. Now it's your turn. So let's talk basics. For the MCAS application, you have 15 slots. They are 700 characters each. You can pick then three of them to be your most meaningful, and those will give you an additional box of 1325 characters. Ideally, right, you are writing two standalone um, responses for those three. So you'll have three events where um, one is both 700 and 1325. For the ACOMIS, you don't have a cap on the number of activities, but you do have um, only 600 characters to write about for each. And for the TMD SAS, you have only 300 characters for each response and the most meaningful, they give you 500 characters. So those are tiny, tiny, tiny. Let's talk about the four different criteria that each application activity section should have, you should be hitting, and the kind of different aspects, different questions you should be asking yourself to make sure it is a balanced application. And if you stick to the end, we will kind of walk through a couple of student samples so you can see what works and what doesn't. Tip one, no fluff, no high school. So first of all, you have 15 slots for the AMCAS. Most students kind of fall in the 12, maybe 13 um, slots. Some students will fill all 15, especially if you've done kind of a master's and you have more kind of time under your belt and experience. If you have, you know, solid um, 11, 12, um, do you want to add extracurriculars? By all means, definitely you should not um, exclude any kind of passion oriented extracurriculars that show that you are not a robot, right? So I've worked with students who are, you know, violinists, um, chess players, have been on the collegiate swim team and are kind of self-appointed gourmet chefs. So um, you should definitely think about how you can kind of include a couple of hobbies that really showcase who you are and, um, and still feels meaningful to um, kind of showing a multifaceted aspect of your candidacy. Tip two, consider the fill in the blank option kind of right above as part of the response, right? So too many times I see, okay, you know, um, volunteer, Heartland Hospice, and then the student will say, as a volunteer at the Heartland Hospice facility, I did X, Y, Z, right? You've already said um, what you kind of gobbled up in 45 characters or something. You've already said that in the kind of fill in the blank above. So make sure that you are using your 700 or 600 um, characters very, very wisely. So you don't really have to kind of have that um, informational or GPS type sentence at the beginning. You want to make sure that you jump right into the actual content. Um, how you kind of, you know, uh, were changed, how you grew, what insight did you gain? Um, how did you kind of gather diverse perspectives? How did you grow in empathy? Really kind of showcase the attributes and traits, show them, and we'll talk about that, what that means exactly, um, that you won't find in a bullet point on the resume. Sometimes, yes, the more kind of dry, direct ones, you can kind of say, I led this, I volunteered here, I learned that. Um, but whenever you possible, showcase kind of, you know, qualitative aspects and experiential moments. So like things that you experience specifically um, that really show kind of things that are uh, dimensions that you won't find in a resume. Tip three, best way to showcase um, a more kind of empathetic or kind of human response is to focus on patient-centric experiences. And I'll, I'll share a couple of examples very soon, but to kind of give you an idea, this is like a working template. So um, you have, you know, two to three sentences that zoom in to your interaction with a patient. Then you end with kind of, you know, what happened in that moment? How did that moment kind of wrap up? And a lesson or two, I think a lesson is fine as to kind of, you know, what insight did you gain regarding kind of that specific um, place, right? Where you went as an experience in general. This last line could also help you kind of connect the experience to how it's gonna benefit you as a medical student. So especially if it's a hobby or non-medical experience, feel free to kind of sprinkle that in to make that connection as to what kind of, you know, skills did you develop or insight did you gain that really helps you become that much of a stronger medical school candidate. 
Tip four, once you map out the activities, I would first do it like a, as an outline or kind of listing them, confer with your um, resume, right? But once you figure out what the kind of activities list is gonna look like, think about it as real estate. So think about it visually. Are you overweighing any one criteria? You should have a balanced kind of, um, you know, multi-dimensional representation of who you are. So you should have shadowing, you should have, you know, shadowing, scribing, more passive uh, medical experiences. You should have volunteering. You should have clinical exposure. You should have research if you have it. Um, and, and then kind of, you know, your personal hobbies. If you have way too many, let's say shadowing experiences, right? And five of, of the slots are five different shadowing experiences, then you are kind of gobbling up other spaces where you could talk about volunteering that you're not necessarily doing it right now. Maybe consider bulking your shadowing experience into one activity and then you kind of list those. When you bulk is the only time I would tell you to kind of, you know, you could potentially use um, bullet points and you can kind of talk about which each doctor was, their specialty, and kind of how many hours, what you did with them, right? And what you learned. So, so consider kind of thinking about your activity section in a very broad way so that you can kind of see the real estate. Am I balanced in every criteria that I should um, exemplify? Bonus tip, you will overlap your experiences from the personal statement with your activity section. That's okay. So if you have you know, an experience with a patient at the Heartland Hospice, let's say, um, in your personal statement, you can absolutely talk about Heartland Hospice as one of your activity section, but zoom in on another patient or zoom in on a different experience, right? So compliment, don't repeat your content that they have in the personal statement. They will already see that um, in connection to your activity section, right? So, so give them more information, more insight into kind of a deepened experience. All right, so here is an experience that is a non-medical experience first. I want you to notice here how the student really kind of zooms in as if they had a camera over their shoulders, right? Okay. During a working set, you approach a special moment when you must readily decide how bad you want to succeed. Beyond this threshold, you will find yourself in an arduous space where your mind and sympathetic nervous system are screaming at you to drop the weight. To successfully endure this space, you must become comfortable with being uncomfortable and push through. This is where growth resides. My training has taught me the significance of grit. More importantly, it has taught me that I'm capable of anything, but we must still endure and work hard. I will continue to apply these lessons in medical school and beyond. So this student's talking about weightlifting, right? We don't start with the kind of as a uh, weightlifter or as an avid weightlifter, right? We go into as if the reader is with me or, you know, with them at, um, in front of the, the barbell. So it's a very kind of story, very narrative, anchored in images moment, which is great. Here is a public health um, experience that, um, that needs work and we'll talk about what. I worked on raising awareness to help prevent the spread of the Zika virus along with professor, name name, at Florida International University. Along with my fellow student volunteers, I went door to door in the local Westchester neighborhood informing and distributing pamphlets with information related to best practices to mitigate the spread of the disease. So I, I see some kind of door to door kind of action, right? Um, I see the student working the kind of grassroots aspect, but I can still see more information if the student gives me a little bit. It's a little on the shorter side, so maybe an actual kind of conversation can start the, the response. Uh, maybe like a brief dialogue with a, a hesitant neighbor, right? Um, instead of, I worked on raising awareness to help prevent the spread of Zika, show me that you are raising awareness, that you are respectfully um, changing people's minds and in a compelling way, showing them kind of, you know, information that empowers them with knowledge. So you can do that very quickly in narrative form, kind of establish someone's um, disbelief or someone's kind of hesitation and then go into how you convince them, let's say. And then here's another one. From playing board games and painting to watching movies together or helping the younger ones eat, as a hemodialysis volunteer, I served as a source of comfort for children and adolescents undergoing treatments. When not on treatment, I aided in their transportation, learned proper IV placements, and served as a companion for those whose families' occupations restrained their ability to be present. Why do I have to come here? asked six-year-old Ashley. I did not know what to say and so blurted out to make a smile. 
Retrospectively, I think that encompasses what I learned from them, to be resilient in the face of impending adversity. So because you only have 700 characters, I wouldn't spend a line saying that you didn't know what to say or you didn't know what to respond, right? And I feel like the lesson doesn't really match up. So you wanna make sure that you are offering stories. The only reason to offer stories is to, is to inspire interest, right? And engagement from the reader, so to entertain, but then to also inspire compassion and to show your empathy. Right, so those are strategically the two reasons why we use stories, because we're nosy and we want to understand and we learn and know the world through stories. So you wanna make sure that any story you use, that you show what the lesson kind of, that the lesson and the story match up, basically. So you wanna make sure that the lesson and the story match up. And right now it doesn't match up yet, but I love the from playing board games, painting to watching movies, um, so you want to, I see all of that. I see the engagement. I see the joy. Um, I see kind of like the, um, you know, yeah. I mean, I see the joy, which is the most important aspect. Um, I think the ending could be reworked a little bit just to lose that phrase about, I didn't know what to say. And the idea of being resilient, I'm not doubting that the six year old baby Ashley was not resilient, but um, the, why do I have to come here? Doesn't really show me that in story form yet. Right. So, um, so maybe kind of, change up the lesson a little bit so it matches up. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, consider subscribing, and share with your pre-med friends. Um, I have another video right here so that you can kind of start thinking about your personal statement. Um, whether you are starting out or you have a full draft, you wanna make sure that you are hitting all the tips and hitting all of the dimensions that you need for a successful personal statement. Good luck, I'll see you soon.